Hello, everyone. On today's edition of The Final Bar, we'll talk Monday sell-off. When you look at seasonal tendencies and, and days of the week, Monday tends to be one of the weakest because of uh, a lot of the major down moves have happened on a Monday. Today seems to be one more data point to fulfill that historical trend. We're going to have a segment called Shifting Stocks where we talk about where to look for some pockets of positivity in all of the negative moves that we're seeing across the board. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. Good afternoon, everyone from Redmond, Washington. My name is Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for joining us today, every weekday after the close for the final bar. This is our attempt to digest today's trading from a technical perspective, connect the short-term movements we see today with the long-term trends. And today was all about distribution, folks. As you, as you probably know, a lot of distribution across the board with the S&P finishing down aggressively and really selling into relative weakness uh, going into uh, in the last uh, last 20 minutes or so to finish more toward the lows of the day. So we've got a lot of interesting ways to try to dissect this. I'm finding with a lot of my charts, instead of just looking at short-term charts, I'm I'm backing up more and more to try and look at some sort of historical time frame that'll help me get my head around what's going on uh, today. And I'll share with you some of the charts that I, I think will help put today and the last couple of weeks into proper context try to chart a way forward, uh, pun intended, try to get a sense of where we need to be headed uh, over, uh, over the coming, coming days, coming weeks, key levels to pay attention to. Now, coming up on this show and on Stock Charts TV over the next couple of weeks, we've got a lot of great guests, good shows to try to help you process everything that's going on here. Um, today, we actually featured Behind the Charts with Brian Shannon. That's our interview style show. I think next Monday, we have Jeff Huge uh, from JWH Investments in Minneapolis, which should be pretty Pretty fascinating, works with a lot of institutional investors. Then on this show this week, we have Aaron Swenlin on the 11th, on the 12th, on Thursday, we have Julius DeKempiter. Then coming up next week, Tim Tashler, who uh, contributes to our top advisors corner, you may have seen his work. And then on the 18th, David Auerbach, uh, who uh, writes the Daily Reit Beat, who's a real estate uh, expert. So it should be very interesting to hear his inputs on how real estate, on a very defensive sort of higher yielding area of the market looks relative to, uh, to other things. Folks, let's get right to the market recap, start to uh, try to make sense of, uh, of what all we're seeing here. So a lot of interesting themes, but in the end, it was all about a sell-off here. So the S&P finishing around 24, sorry, 27.46. It's down about 7.6% from Friday's close. Uh, the NASDAQ down a little bit less than that. Mid caps down even more and small caps down almost 10% today. It was about 9.7%. So again, it was clearly a move, uh, you know, again, leaning more toward the larger side of the cap range. That's happened for the last couple of weeks. It's sort of been moving more defensive, um, but still within a very growthy sort of, uh, sort of area. Um, tech and utilities, if I remember, I think are the only two sectors remaining above their 200 moving averages. So we'll take a look at some of those uh, in, a, uh, in a minute. Today's sell-off pushed the VIX above 55. It's at 55.31. We're going to look at a long-term chart of the VIX. You'll actually see how incredibly rare that is. This is up from much, much lower over the last uh, last week or two. Let's look at a daily chart of the S&P. We'll try to try to put some more details behind this uh, this recap. So, looking at a daily chart, you know, it's often been said the markets go up the escalator and down the elevator. And when we met with Ralph Akinpour at his barn. A couple months ago, hopefully you saw our, uh, our documentary sort of capturing that experience of going around the barn with him. He actually had that quote broken up in two sides around the corner of the barn where the market rotated down uh, uh, around the Great Depression area, end of the 20s into the 30s. And this chart, I think, could be the most recent textbook example of what that quote actually represents. And the idea is that people don't just go all in and buy everything at once. You slowly accumulate. And as the market goes up, you continue to gain confidence and you continue to accumulate. When you freak out and when you panic and when it feels like things are going to go to zero, you tend to not slowly unwind some of those positions and slowly raise cash. You dump everything, right? You panic and you dump it all very quickly. And that's what causes 
uh, this movement with a slow, steady incline and a very severe decline. It's interesting because we've been in sort of uncharted territory so long with looking at where the market is, because I always talk about look at the final bar and look to the left. And when you continue to go to new highs, you don't really have a frame of reference to work with. Now that we're back within this range that we've been in the last year or so, it's a lot more helpful in terms of support and resistance, because now we can really look at where the market trades relative to some of those key support levels. Last week, and this is from a week and a half ago, the, the S&P was down 16% from its high second week in February to where we are, third week in February down to where we saw um, the low here. And this was Friday before last. After that, we jumped up, retraced about 50% of the way, then rotated back below the 200 day moving average and into Friday's session. That's where we gapped down again, but closed a little stronger. And the question was, is this the beginning of a higher low recovery or is this the uh, sort of next, you know, pause dead cat bounce before we resolve lower? And I feel like today we certainly the question had not been answered in your mind before today. I hope today sort of uh, cements that, but it certainly feels like we're aiming more towards distribution than accumulation. We blew right through this support range, which is what we talked about on Friday. This was the low from, uh, from that Friday before, around 28.60, 28.50, and also down to around 28.20. This is the lows from last August and last October. As you can see, we've now broken down through that range, down through that low and closed down to it. Now we've gotten down to this next support level, and this is a really important one. This comes from the lows last March, the lows end of May, beginning of June, which is the bottom in the, in the summer before we rallied uh, into the end of the year. And also it's a 61.8% retracement of this overall move from the Christmas Eve 18 uh, low to the high from February 2020. So it's a very important level here. I would argue that this is the level, this is the support level, if we can hold this, I feel like it's more of a time correction. I feel like it's more backing and filling and processing the sell-off. If we go down through it though, and I think 2,700 is the really important level to watch, uh, to watch. In, in my opinion, from a technical perspective, there's not much there until you get down to the market lows around 2,350, which would be you know, much more, much steeper decline that gets us down uh, much, much deeper than we've been uh, so far. So I think this week is gonna be really important based on where we've gone and how deeply we've uh, moved down so quickly. You would expect to see some sort of bounce off of these lows at some point. Might might not be tomorrow, but it'll be soon. But then the question is again: Is it another dead cap bounce and further? And again, I my my guess, uh, gun to my head, would be I think we we're, we're going to continue to see lower lows before uh, this is all said and done. But again, it could take quite a bit of time to fill in some of those uh, some of those details. Let's look at what else happened here. Um, looking at a sector basis, it was definitely a move more towards defensive. So consumer staples down the least, but still down over 4%, followed by healthcare and utilities. So all three of those, uh, the top three sectors, but all still down pretty significantly. Energy was the big loser. And, and if you watch the news over the weekend, crude oil was down heavily uh, yesterday um, in the futures and the equity futures were down to the limit. And so it wasn't not a surprise we sold off so aggressively this morning, but oil down 20, 25%, uh, if not more, energy down 20%, financials down 10%. Uh, as rates uh, plummet, go lower, and the TLT, the bond ETF, uh, rallying pretty pretty well. In terms of overall, uh, you know, uh, industries and ETFs, and then we're going to get into our next segment. Um, you know, I think it's important on a market like this. Question I always I always hear is like, what do you do now? Now that we've sold off so much, so I think there's a couple of things. Number one, don't get uh, maybe three things. Number one, don't panic is number one. Let's just relax. Look at the data, see what it can tell us. Number two, with the broad market, I think you want to look for some sort of historical context. And a little later, we're going to talk about some of the breadth indications that we've seen and see how they line up to some of the long-term uh, indications. And then finally, look for pockets of opportunity. There are still opportunities within the equity space where they are holding up, okay, where stocks are not necessarily breaking down, or if they are going down, not breaking down as much. And I think you want to use the screening tool to try to identify some of those pockets of outperformance. And again, even if you're going to be down, I would love to be down a lot less than the broader market. And that's what in general in this kind of environment pays to get defensive, pays to get into the telecoms, the uh, water stocks, which was a group that was uh, a pretty good, uh, you know, big utilities, real estate, the dividend payers, uh, things like that, that are going to, um, that are going to in general, give us some sort of income component and also uh, be where a, pl a place where people tend to gravitate. So that's our recap for today. And again, it was all about the sell-off. I think you know, the main thing is looking at the broad chart, um, look at, you know, from a trend following perspective, the trend is down, let's get, let's embrace that and just look for signs that the downtrend is abating. I haven't seen that yet uh, by, by most measures. 
Let's go to our next segment though called shifting stocks. I wanted to focus on uh, individual stocks and groups and themes. What can we kind of suss out looking at the data? Where are there opportunities to, um, to uh, outperform or to, to perform better than a, uh, a, a, a struggling, struggling take? First place I would look is at the Scooter Reports. Look, look at the top um, uh, ranked names. So these are the stocks in the large cap universe at the upper end. You do the same exercise with mid cap and with small cap, and I'd encourage you to do that too. Look for places where they're holding up pretty well. If you don't know these tickers, I'll, I'll summarize what we're seeing. It's some of the biotech names. So this is uh, Regeneron. Uh, so obviously within healthcare, down 4%, which is totally fair, but you can see this is a stock that's actually for the last six, seven days, has closed up toward the highs of the day. So even though the market's been selling off, this continues to close toward the high, showing that people are accumulating during the days. So this is the top rank stock now, according to the scooter rankings. It's down 4% today, which is totally fair. So it's not going up, but it's not going down nearly as much as the broad, uh, as the broad market. You can see the relative performance here at the bottom and the number of the biotech names have looked pretty good on a relative basis. And again, if you have to be somewhere uh, Tom Boley, a fellow contributor, longtime stock charts contributor, said, you know, if you want to outperform the S&P 500, you need to own stocks that are outperforming the S&P 500. So if you want to be going down less than the market, you need to hold things that are going down less than the market. And that's what this uh, is telling you. Genron is one of those places that, that kind of makes sense right about now. Um, also, there's a move toward things like uh, grocery stores, you know, things of the more disaster prep type of thing. And and again, I may be a little biased in there being in the Northwest where, you know, we're, we're experiencing a little more of a lockdown and social distancing and all these things you might have heard about. We're actually seeing it real time and, you know, dealing with school closings and all of that. I think a lot of the country has not seen that as much as we might have in the Seattle area. And I think when that does, it'll people get a sense a little more about how the potential for disruption and, and what that might look like. And, and I think that'll help stocks like Kroger, which have rallied dramatically, obviously, in the last couple of weeks. But the relative strength continuing to go up. Not a bad chart. And again, it's down a little bit today, but overall, the trend still remains positive at a time when, when most stocks have broken down aggressively and are sort of more toward the lower end of the range for the last couple of weeks. Um, gold miners, mining stocks have held up pretty well. Uh, Newmont Mining down pretty big today um, with, with everything down at 8.7%. But again, overall, still above a, an, a, an, uh, an increasing 50-day moving average, which is kind of rare these days. The RSI nowhere near the 40 level, so kind of holding up okay. Uh, and again, so gold and gold stocks have certainly been more of a safe haven uh, recently. And then the last one I would say, there are a lot of uh, sort of utility types of plays. So um, WEC might be a good example of that, right? Multi-utility. So again, similar to the name we looked at earlier, I like stocks that are closing more toward the highs. A lot of things have seen distribution, a lot of negativity, kind of this capitulative move of things going down a lot. Um, you know, this is an example, WEC and a number of the other utilities actually closing back up into the range from the last couple of weeks. So this chart overall is holding up really, really nicely. Came off uh, last week uh, and uh, the week before when the market, market came off, but holding up nicely, relative strength uh, going vertical essentially, but that's not that impressive given how much everything else has uh, sold off. And then the last group I just wanted to point out real quickly before we look at some of the other movers, was uh, Citrix system. So if you look at CTXS, also Zoom Media, ZM, that's what we use for, um, for, uh, for this show and for a lot of our uh, you know, telecommuting work at Stock Charts. Those are two stocks that are actually doing really, really nicely. And again, this is more of a speculation of people needing to rely more on web conferencing and, uh, and things like that, which I would certainly expect to be the case. So the stocks are reflecting that optimism in their, uh, in their business. You can see they've rallied nicely, holding up pretty well. And again, the last couple of days have been you know, buyers coming in midday, pushing it up uh, toward the uh, toward the uh, the closing uh, bell and a nice relative performance. Zoom is the other one I did, ticker ZM. Newer stock, this just went public earlier in the year, but you can see how it's it's almost at new highs, down only half a percent and down 50 basis points in this environment is pretty much like you're up a million on a normal day. Uh, so holding up very, very nicely, a stock that's uh, that's doing pretty well. In terms of the, the movers here, a lot of stocks going down. And if you look at the names, it's a lot of uh, transports, it's a lot of energy for sure. That's where a lot of the, the biggest down moves have been in our scooter rankings. So not surprising to see a lot of those uh, energy stocks represented on there. So again, when everything quote unquote is going down, I like for things that are going down less or things that are holding up okay. I was actually surprised to see some of these groups that wanted to point out to you. Number one, AutoZone. So the um, sort of uh, 
Uh, auto parts stocks actually do really nicely. Um, they're a very different return profile than most stocks, which have sort of been up and to the right and now correcting. These have actually been beaten down year to date. So starting uh, just before the new year, but definitely in the new year, down and underperforming significantly. But from mid-February, have actually held up pretty well. So the rest of this, the uh, equities had been rallying and came off. These came off as well, but not nearly as much. And now they're actually returning back higher. So AZO is kind of uh, coming up a little bit, showing some signs of life. Uh, other stocks in that group would be like AAP. This is uh, not doing as well, but still, you know, relative strength improving. It's almost this uh, uh, positive pattern. It's not a bullish engulfing pattern because we didn't have a down day on Friday, but uh, overall, certainly seeing accumulation going into uh, the end of the session here. Another group that I thought was interesting to see, um, dollar stores. You have like Dollar Tree down here. This looks a lot like advanced auto parts. So it's, you know, again, not my personal favorite chart because I don't like to go for the falling knife strategy and buy severe weakness. I'd much rather buy when something's more established. But stocks like this are on my watch list to see how they rally and then how they recover, right? What sort of accumulation we see? Do we see people flying to these uh, dollar uh, dollar store types of names? So DL DLTR is one of the biggest gainers. It was up 4% today on a uh, on a day when uh, when most things are done. So another idea, honestly, we, we talked about this last week on Thursday, I want to say we did a segment on uh, the scanning engine. We did a couple scans. One of them was stocks making new price highs. Another one was stocks uh, making new relative highs. I think both of those would be interesting. The other one I would suggest maybe, and I'll just show you, where gosh, we got to move on. We look at my scans page. I have this one called stocks above a rising 200 day moving average. Now, what's really interesting about this one is I ran this scan on Friday. There were about 172 S&P stocks trading above an increasing 200 day moving average. Earlier today, it was down to about 100, and now it's down to about 81. So a lot of stocks obviously have rotated lower. But if you look at this list, you're going to find things like Activision, which again, were down. But overall, it's not a bad chart. And again, at a time when the average chart looks pretty bad right now, look for stocks that are holding with an RSI above 40, as Activision has for the last year. Look for stocks making new relative highs. So I think there are opportunities out there. If you look at the charts, look at the scooter rankings, look at the scanning engine, I think there are plenty of opportunities have to know where to dig everybody. We're going to take a quick break. Thanks for uh, this segment, Shifting Stocks. We'll be back answering some of your questions from the final bar mailbag. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back to our show, The Final Bar. Thanks again for joining us every weekday after the close, and especially in the you know last week, this week, and going forward. Appreciate your patience as we figure out all the logistics with uh, with what's going on in the uh, in the Seattle area. We're sort of figuring out how we can keep Stock Charts TV running in as beautiful and, uh, and effective a way as possible, given some of the challenges we're facing. A lot of us working remotely, so thanks for sticking with us. Um, we'd love to answer your questions, and I, I would say in an environment like this, when the market is so crazy disruptive. This is the time to be hitting us with any questions you have because we're here to help you uh, empower you as much as possible to make better decisions using our, uh, our charting platform. Um, so the best way to get questions to me is the final bar at stockcharts.com. Just shoot us an email there or on Twitter at final bar SCTV. Or during the show, just put a question in our Q&A panel and we'll make sure we capture those and then answer them in our next mailbag segment. But today, I wanted to answer questions from the final bar mailbag. These are questions from all of you in the last a uh, couple of days, so we've accumulated three of them. As always, I promise my wife, Mrs. Keller, to limit the number of questions. Anytime I try to answer like seven of them, she rides me right afterwards and tells me uh, I, I tried to bite off too much. So we're going to stick with three. Question number one, does a bullish, engul bullish engulfing pattern in an uptrend have the same meaning as in a downtrend? Below is a chart of SPTL that I'm watching closely, and I'm not going to show the exact chart you sent, but I sort of recreated it here. Um, the SPTL, if you're not familiar with, it's a um, long bond ETF, similar to like the TLT, kind of a similar idea to that. 
And the question in particular was relating to, uh, to this. I'm going to switch it to a candle chart so you can see exactly what I think they were asking. Here we go. So you see, we had the run up, then we had a down candle here, and then a bullish candle. They're asking about that period there. So does that count as a bullish engulfing pattern? Because it's in an uptrend, it's not in a downtrend. Does that have the same uh, bullish uh, outlook? So the short answer is no, it doesn't. Um, and I, I had a chance to work with Steve Nissen uh, years ago during my Bloomberg year. Steve is you know, credited as the one who brought candlestick analysis from Japan to the West and wrote a number of books on it. It was one of the first books on technical analysis I read after John Murphy's uh, seminal work that many of you have read as well. Talking with Steve about it, he taught me more than I, even his books had stressed that what happens leading up to the candle pattern is incredibly important. And the, the, the idea is there are a couple, a couple of things you need to answer. Number one, what is the pattern? One candle, two candle, or multi-candle pattern. And then number two, what's the trend leading up to the pattern? And those are the two things you need to know. After that, you can make an assessment about what to happen next. A bullish engulfing pattern based on the methodology is really only valid when it comes after a downtrend. So if, if the, TL, the SPTL had sold off and that was the pattern we saw, that would absolutely be a very bullish uh, pattern. And he would say that the stop for that long trade or for that bullish sentiment would be the lower end of the candle pattern, so the low of day two. In this case, it's not technically a bullish engulfing pattern. However, you know, I tend to think of candles less as the labeling and less as the strict rules that have been, you know, disseminated and more about what it tells you. And what I'm seeing here is a sell off that first day and then the second day, a lot of accumulation. And I like to see accumulation that pushes us above the previous day's range. Like that just feels more bullish than bearish. And so, you know, based on a short term read, I think that certainly represents buyers coming in, certainly represents more demand than supply and suggests a short term rally. So that's how I would interpret it. But to answer your question, no, it technically does not. You need to have a downtrend leading up to it. Certain patterns actually have different names. So something like a hammer candle would be a completely different name uh, if it comes at, at a top or at bottom. And, and, and the same with, uh, with some of those different, uh, different patterns. Question number two, thanks for the insight. You're welcome. Uh, when you review all of the stock charts on the weekends, what are you looking for and how long does it take you now as compared to when you started? It's a really good question. I, I probably, I, I think I mentioned probably a lot um, my routine. So I have, <clears throat> excuse me, two key routines that I do once a week. One is going through the Mindful Investor Live chart list, which I'm showing you on the screen here. And this is a list of charts that I've accumulated over time. These have been sort of, I look at these every morning, but every weekend, uh, every week, usually on Friday afternoons, I try to just go through the list again and just take a step back. It's easy to get caught up during the trading week with everything going on, but you know, afternoon Friday uh, in uh, in Seattle's after the close, about two three p.m. Perfect time to just go through these again and just see what signals are telling. And that's when I put a lot of the annotations on here. That's where I change some of the time frames if I want to, uh, you know, focus on a particular signal or a particular pattern. Uh, and so that's one part of it. The other thing that I do though is go through the S and P five hundred, and I do it very manually. So what I actually do is I go on uh, my chart list here. If I go to my dashboard. I'll go to chart list. Uh, you can see, and I actually use this one uh, right here, S&P by sector and industry. And I'll show you what it does. It's exactly what I do. I start with communication services. I have them ordered by sector and then by group. So it starts with communication services and entertainment. So it's Charter, it's Comcast, so these are the old media names, Disney, uh, Discovery. And then once we get through these, it'll go through the next uh, group, sorry, more and more, more. Here we go now. Fixed Telecoms. This is CenturyLink, AT&T, Verizon. Then we get into the rest of communication services. You can see this is 50 pages of 10 charting. Or are a couple of things. I'm looking for where we're at relative to where we've been. I'm focusing keenly on relative strength, and that's the main thing that I do here. So seeing AT&T, AT and you know, threatening a new 12-month relative high is something that came out of my review over the last, uh, 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 yesterday, going through some of these, uh, some of these charts on here. And, and find certain you know, things that I took away from this yesterday, number one, obviously a lot of things down. I saw a lot of things holding above a, um, an ascending 200 day moving average. That's changed a lot today. So I remember thinking yesterday, you know, boy, maybe this isn't gonna be as bad as we, as we thought. If, um, if these stocks were able to hold it, again, that's sort of ruptured as, as a lot of those stocks, over half of them, Sort of broke down today, but also within technology, I was actually uh, interested to see how much of tech has held up very, very, uh, very, very nicely. 
So that's my process. I actually go by one by one. I have a notebook that I've kept for years where I'm just jotting tickers and and themes uh, and and, uh, and just after some of the ideas that I have. I kind of look for groupings of patterns. So are there certain patterns and certain types of memes? Are they more offensive, more defensive, uh, and so forth? And in terms of how long it takes me, I get through it in about 30 minutes now, uh, but originally it took me probably four hours, I would say. And uh, my wife and family appreciate the fact that I can get through it much more quickly now because I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm going more rapid fire. And I also get a chance to look at a lot of charts during the week. Question number three, and thanks for that one. Uh, which method of market analysis would be best used as a guiding principle that helps you decide which appropriate action to take, as well as for zeroing in on interesting markets or prospects, relative analysis, technical indicators, leading economic indicators, macro sentiment indicators, and what? So I, am, I will give you the very biased answer that obviously I'm a chart guy. And so my main uh, guiding principle is trend, is, is price. And if, you know, again, I've always said, if I had, if I had one thing to determine the price of the S&P 500 going forward, it would be a chart of the price of the S&P 500, because I think that is the one most important thing that you can do. If you want to understand something, look at the price, because that encapsulates all the fundamentals, all the emotional response, all the supply and demand is all in the price. So you just have to wait, have a way of analyzing it. So this one chart, if I just had to have a sense of whether or not I want to be long or short, or whether I want to be more aggressive or less aggressive, it would be this chart. And this is a market trend chart that I designed years ago. It's using the uh, weekly 21 and 34 week exponential moving averages. And overall, this is still in positive territory, although it's really come down. And if we continue to, to trade down in these levels, it will trigger at some point, I would, I would, uh, I would assume. But the, also the shorter term tactical one is the weekly PPO or the weekly MACD. And that I have found has been really helpful as an early warning system of when things are changing. So a couple of weeks ago when we sold off, it gave a trigger saying this is more distributed. Tactically, you need to be out or waiting or cautious, and and that's certainly the tone that I've felt myself take looking at a lot of the different uh, a lot of the different charts on there. For me, everything else adds to that one piece of analysis. If I had one piece, it would be this, and then everything else are ways to qualify or validate what you see on that uh, one chart. My challenge to all of you is, what is your guiding principle? Hopefully, as we go through some of the charts here, you can get some ideas, but. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a great question. And perhaps a deeper question we can tackle in a, in a future episode or a special. So thank you so much for those three. We need to wrap the show, folks, and go to the three and three. So at the end of every show, three charts in three minutes. We're going to go rapid fire because I ran long and sorry for that. Here we go. Chart number one, the VIX. The VIX is spiked above 50 for the first time in almost ever. This is incredibly rare. And the fact that it's accelerated so quickly has happened before, but the extreme upside has been different. It is now at the highest level it's been since the 2008 to 2009 market low. And I think that's really telling when, what, you know, you, I find myself with charts like the VIX, instead of looking at the last year, all of a sudden I'm dragging it out 20, 30 odd years because you want to see where we're at relative to some of these major pullbacks. And we've now gone higher than we did in 2002 in the late nineties. Um, we're back to, you know, a climactic uh, downtrend that really put us from a, uh, a cyclical to a, a cyclical bull to a cyclical, cyclical bear. And I think that's telling. <clears throat> Chart number two is stocks versus bonds, the SPY versus TLT ratio. Uh, this has gone incredibly negative, And I think there are a lot of signs on the chart of the TLT and the SPTL that, uh, that things were going well, that the price was going up. And I think we've seen that validated, showing the relative weakness of stocks relative to bonds. I would point out that this ratio has gone down a lot very suddenly, which is actually pretty rare. Other times when that has happened, we've seen a reaction move. So even if overall it's going to favor bonds over stocks, there might be a rotation in uh, the next week to, uh, to be back more towards uh, equities. Uh, we'll have to see. Finally, I would remind you, there are pockets of the equity universe that are doing just fine. This is the food retailers group, which is within consumer discretionary, holding the 200-day moving average, new relative strength high for the last 12 months. So there are opportunities out there, folks. You just have to know how to do it. And as a reminder, the things that I would use, number one, have a good routine for going through the stocks like I just articulated in my uh, weekly routine. Use the scanning engine and use the scooter report. Scanning engine to find stocks with certain patterns, the scooter rankings to see which stocks are still working. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for a climactically difficult Monday afternoon. But thanks for sticking with us. And again, when a market does this sort of thing, I think we can help you if you just uh, keep watching Stock Charts TV. Hopefully we'll give you Plenty of uh, plenty of ideas. For Stock Charts TV in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Have a great night.